and welcome to today's segment of The Power of Money. I'm your host, Michelle Graves, and as always, I'm delighted to be in your world for the next hour to bring you persons and subjects of interest around the industry and the field of money and finance, which I'm proud to say for the last 38 years, I have been known as the money lady. So if you ask, well, why is she the money lady? Well, why don't you sit down and take out a pen and pencil and learn? So today our guest is a old friend of mine, a very established woman in the field of taxes. And yes, you may not like to talk about taxes, but taxes and tax time is fast approaching. And we want to hear some tips from her, some recommendations, and things that you need to do to prepare for tax year next year, 2016, so that you won't lose opportunities. Many of us uh, did not take advantage of many of the opportunities that were available in 2014 so as to minimize your tax liability for 2015. But we're going to talk to an expert, and I have to say so, and I don't say it without any kind of shame. Uh, she got my world together. You know, in the world of business, you're so busy doing everything but taking care of the needful things. And the federal government and the Internal Revenue Service is a needful thing. So I introduce to all of you today, uh, she was a guest some time ago, but I've got her back again, Robin Lewis, and she'll be uh, talking about taxation and tax planning for 2015. Thank you. Welcome. Okay. Good to hear you again. Good yeah. to see you again. Yeah, good to be here again. Well, bring me up to date. Give, give, give my um, viewers a little bit of background about who you are and what makes you so special. Okay. Well, I'm Robin Lewis. I have spent the last 12 years uh, doing taxes, um, professionally working self-employed. Uh, I was associated with a company called Compro Tax for the last 12 years, and this year I decided to take a leap of faith and go out on my own so I renamed my company RZL Tax Services and so we're just starting in business this year but really uh, uh, mostly nothing changed but the name. Well I'm, I must say that I am proud that you chose to go on your own as a, a female business owner no disparaging your previous relationship but I always like to see women step out and do their own thing mm -hmm. and you've been doing your own thing for all those years anyway. That's right. That's right. So that's now right. you get all the money. Mm -hmm. get for all you. The yes, yes. I like I like yes, that. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's a new thing, but I, I like it. It's it's turned out pretty good. The timing's really great. Uh, this is sort of a transition year, so it's all going well. Everything's changing. Well, that's good. I know that you spend a lot of your practice time with business owners, small business owners, as well as individuals. Yes. In terms of tax planning, and I can say for myself that you have certainly been masterful in my tax work <laughs> and saved me a ton of money over the years. So it's I, I'm not ashamed to say that you really have made a difference. And I had a CPA, a tax accountant, and an internal person. And notwithstanding the work that they do, you bring something a little bit different to the table. What do you feel your specialty is? Uh, I, I like to focus on businesses. Um, Consulting, I think uh, I run into a lot of businesses that just don't know. Um, so we're all about knowledge. Uh, we try to educate people so that they do the right things. Like you said, they make uh, decisions prior to filing their taxes, years prior, that help them to take proper deductions. And, you know, record keeping is a good part of we don't see any reason why we need to keep our bank statements, really. Um, well, and let's, <laughs> if a business owner, now let's talk about the evolution of business owners. and small business people, many of them uh, came out of a passion and a desire to do a particular thing, but they didn't have any kind of infrastructure right, and information, right. mm -hmm, and, they, mm -hmm. and they didn't know how the system worked. Right, right. So right. what do you bring to the table on that? Well, we, we talk to them. Um, we specifically get into a lot of different businesses. One of the things I learned out here is that uh, there's a lot of successful business people out here. Um, they just do what they do. Mm -hmm. And then when it comes to tax, it's like, uh, I'm lost. I don't know what to do. So I'm like, you're <coughs> such an expert in your business. So I sit down with them. Uh, we start out with the whole employee contractor issue. That is a big issue with uh, businesses. Well, let's talk about that. Employee 
versus contractor, mm -hmm. also known as 1099. Yes, versus oh, W-2. Oh, man. Yes, yes. Okay, W-2 versus 1099. 1099. Let me just stop for a minute. Business owners, you need to listen to this because you, you need to know that this is a, this is a biggie. Mm -hmm. This is a biggie with the IRS, okay? Yeah, this so is So let's really talk big. about the W-2s versus the 1099s. Okay, everybody wants to go 1099. Of course. It's so much easier. I don't have to worry about those quarterly taxes, and I don't have to have the lump sum money. But the actual definition of an employee is someone who you give hours to, mm -hmm. you define their work, you tell them how to do it, when to do it, and where to do it. Uh, so let's a, be clear. They, you, you, you tell them what, what to do, what to do, how, how, to, do how it, to do it, and when to do and it. And when to do right, it. That's right. You give them hours. If, okay. If, if your worker has set hours that you have given them, they're an employee. Um, wow, Robin. Yes, yes. And if you're that's worker, not good news. No, for it's a lot not. Of and, and, yes, because I mean, you and I both know how the game works. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, okay. Mm -hmm. And if he can or she can have people working for her, and not have to pay all the associated taxes yes. for an employee. Right. That's what we then, all try to do. Okay. Yes. That that that's just human nature. It is. Okay? It is. It is so but it's on. wrong. Um, and IRS is you getting really... You say it is wrong. Yes, it is wrong um, if you have an employee. And most businesses, I hate to say, have employees. Yes, they just not 1099. It. Yeah, not 1099. So there are certain types of businesses that have, uh, you know, you do your construction businesses, your contractors, your floor layers and things like that. Mm -hmm. They hire people per job. So therefore, they can say, I need you to do this. Come on in, you know, and they don't give them hours. They come in when the work's in. Okay. And so those kind of people are clearly defined as 1099ers. Okay, so a contractor or say a painter mm -hmm. and he brings in guys to help him paint right. for the job. For a particular job. <coughs> so those for a are, particular mm -hmm. job. Right, right. But it, not for all jobs. Yes, and not every day. So if I get a job, I get a contract, I'm going to pull you in. That's a contractor. But if you have steady work all year long and this person's working eight to five in your establishment, um, and you are paying them a salary and telling them how to do their work. Okay. Is this what I want? This is how I want it done? That's an employee. That person needs to be withheld, taxes on, and paid quarterly. Oh, my God. <laughs> so that's... Rain the... on my parade <laughs> this morning. Yes. Okay. But it's not that bad. I mean, mm -hmm. I even see uh, even younger entrepreneurs now who've gotten a grasp of the whole employee thing. You lecture them long enough. They do listen. Okay. And so they get with a... Uh, payroll company. Okay. And uh, there's so many easy ways to do payroll now online. The hard part is just making that quarterly payment with the money. But it's not that complicated. And so I see people kind of starting to get into the flow of that. Um, another issue with that is that those people who have contractors, mm -hmm. you know, your janitorials, your construction guys, they think it's cute to pay under the table. Now, oh. tell me what under the table <laughs> means. That means that, you know, they do a job, they're out on a project, it might last two weeks. Mm -hmm. Then they get uh, the owner or the head person gets a big check from the company. And so mm -hmm. then they go cash a check and he throws cash at everybody. There's no records kept, there's no nothing. So then at the end of the year when they come to see me, oh, yeah, I paid the guy 20000 Really? I'm like, well, what's his name? I didn't get his name. I didn't get his social. So there you are with $20,000. Of of unaccounted for. Right, because if he had a filled out the W-9, which is what you do before you even start a person working, it's just simply asking for your name, your address, and your social, social. so mm -hmm. that I can pay you and so that I don't have to pay tax. So if that's not done, um, 1099 is not issued. The business owner ends up paying taxes on that money that could have been that a write-off. dispersed out mm -hmm. as cash. Right, right. right. Wow. So that's one of my biggest now, what things. Now, what are the penalties associated with um, a failure to treat a person who is an employee as a W-2 employee? Oh, there are plenty of penalties because it, they call it the trust tax. Okay. Uh, payroll tax is called the trust tax, and trust tax has a 100% penalty. What did you say? 100% penalty. So in other words, we have a a case in history now um, of someone who did that. Um, they're a congressman. I don't know if you heard of him. He just resigned. Oh, my God. Now that that was his issue. Um, he is uh, being charged with tax fraud. Um, tax it, fraud because he did what? Because he did not pay his payroll taxes. He did not pay his taxes to the government. 
for oh. I think a three-year period. So that would be while he was 12 in Congress quarters. or prior to. Um, I believe a little both. Okay. And then denied it the whole time. Oh, until, so then he lied. Yes. Dig and a deeper hole. Right. Got okay. reelected. Got, got reelected. Re dig a, the dig yes. a deeper hole. Uh huh. And then okay. the hundred percent penalty plus the tax he didn't pay, because let's say you owe three hundred thousand dollars in payroll taxes, your penalty is three hundred thousand. So that's six hundred thousand. Right. Right. So. And that plus particular. interest? Plus Does interest, interest, interest yes. retroactively, yes, can I yes, ask? Yes, retroactively. Interest oh, and no. penalties. Okay. And so there you have a real problem, and that is the one tax they're willing to prosecute. They're willing to prosecute <laughs> on willing pay? To prosecute. I mean, go to the clinker? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, on trustee tax. That on is the one okay. tax, yes. So if you do payroll, I tell people, if you're going to get involved in it, get, understand it. Uh, you have to follow the rules. You make your quarterly payments. Mm -hmm. Now, IRS may contact you and say you're not big enough for quarterly and tell you you can wait till the end of the mm -hmm. year. But you must be contacted by IRS. You can't make that decision on your own. Okay. And so, uh, pay your quarterly taxes. There, half the taxes you write that you pay are deductible, and the wages you pay are deductible from your gross earnings. That's right. That's right for a business. So while it seems like a bad thing, you do get a benefit from it. So let me kind of um, understand this summarily. Many business owners are thinking they're doing a smart thing by treating people that are employees as 1099s. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mainly because they think that they don't have the tax burden. Is that correct? Well, I think they think it, they don't want to go through the hassle. A payroll. A payroll. A okay. Payroll can be a hassle if you don't have a smooth system. Um, those reports have to be filed quarterly. It's called a 941. Um, and at the end of every quarter, you would file it and pay the tax. And pay the tax. And pay the tax. Is that that's the payroll tax? Uh huh. That is the. Is that an ex is that an additional expense that they wouldn't have had to pay with 1099? Oh, most definitely. Then that's most your definitely. bingo. Uh -huh. I got mm -hmm. it. Okay. Yes, yes. So that additional tax. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that would not be a part of a 1099 self-employed right, right, individual right, right. is now an employer mm -hmm, expense. Mm -hmm. right. But it is tax deductible? Yes, you get half your Social Security <coughs> and Medicare. The employer has to pay half, the employee pays half. Your half is deductible and the wages you pay, you get to write off. So. Well, that's not really a bad thing unless you're in the early years and your cash flow. Mm -hmm. Yes. That, and your that's cash what, mm -hmm, flow mm -hmm, in yes, business yes. is about cash mm -hmm, flow. Mm -hmm. And you have to plan for this quarterly. You can't just, oh my God, it's due. There has to be some money set aside. We try to mm -hmm. teach early businesses every month you kind of know what you've got. Put some money in the bank. Okay. Put some money in the bank every month. Then by the third month, you've got enough in there to pay. Go pay and then start your monthly over. Don't wait okay. till the quarter and then try to scrape the money together. Mm -hmm. And so that's just a technique, but um, that's what scares most people away because with the 1099, you don't have to worry about anything. Right. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's seamless, mm -hmm. but, mm -hmm. but the rules seem to me to be rather crisp yes, they're about very what crisp. constitutes an employee versus a mm -hmm. self-employed yes, uh, yes. contracted mm -hmm. individual. Mm -hmm. And they're pretty edgy. Um, IRS is really looking at these things now because there's a lot of people who have clear employees. Sometimes it's the line's not so clear, certain mm -hmm. types of businesses. But other types of businesses, we're say example, you pay a receptionist. Yeah. She's not a contractor. You no, told she her what time is. to come right, in, you told exactly. her what time to leave, and you told her what you wanted to do. Right. So that's an employee. You can't give her a 1099. Mm. You know. Now, what happens if a person in that type of a job capacity gets a 1099 and says, because the liability is now on you, mm -hmm, if you have mm -hmm. the 1099, mm -hmm, right. you got to report mm -hmm, the earnings mm -hmm, as yes. a self-employed. Right. And <coughs> also pay the additional self-employment tax, which hits that person very hard, then they get angry and they want to run and tell on the employer. Why should I have to pay all this tax? Because the 1099 does hurt at the end. Mm -hmm. you know? And now 1099s must be filed as self-employment because the IRS wants to get their cut of self-employment tax, which Whoa. is Social Security and Medicare. Right. Mm -hmm. Where mm -hmm. the, in, in the other scenario, and I'm just simplifying this because this is a big area of noncompliance. Yes, it is. It and is. I know for a fact from observation from all the years that I work with companies that 
failure to hold this and to deal with payroll taxes will shut your business mm -hmm. down. It will destroy you. Yes. It will shut your business mm -hmm. down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what is, and I know we're going to talk about taxes, but this is so important because you do specialize in business owners, mm -hmm. and I'm a strong proponent of people having their own stuff. That's right. I mean, that's, that's the American way. Mm -hmm. Have your mm -hmm. own stuff. Mm -hmm. You can work a job, but always have your own stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if they don't understand the rules, their own stuff can backfire on yes. them yes. and put them in a compromised position, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. even leading to possible jail time. Yes. I mean, I time. think about mm -hmm. the IRS as the only agency that can put you in the <laughs> penitentiary. <laughs> I mean, what can one say? Yes, yes, yes. I think we're going to see a sample of it soon. Oh, my God. Yes, I think we're going to see a sample, you know. Uh -huh. um, so a lot of times, you know, people just have to learn. Um, the businesses that I see thus far, uh, most of them are not in a very high, super high income where mm -hmm. not paying these taxes is really, well, it's going to hurt them, but it's not going to put them into a place where they'd have to go to jail because they owe a million bucks in taxes. Oh, a million bucks, you mm -hmm. go to jail. Yes, yes, yes. So you kind of have to be <coughs> somewhat careful about that so that you don't uh, get that. And educating people on that is, is really my goal. Mm -hmm. You know, it's really my goal. So do you do seminars? That type of thing? Well, we do a few seminars, but we notice that people don't have time for seminars. But business owners are trying to make yes, money. Yes, they're trying to make money, mm -hmm. and you say, oh, I'm doing Maybe a seminar, Sundays. and you try Sundays. to do something free, yeah. and they still don't come. So you say, like, what I do is just get them, and I lecture them when I get them into right. my office. Right, right, and, and let them you know, and take your services and write them off on mm -hmm. taxes. That's right, and so I mean, then they know. come in, and they, well, can I talk to you? And so it's the summer, or it's a mm -hmm. like Sunday, mm -hmm. like you said, mm -hmm. but more one-on-one. -on -one okay. Because business owners are busy. And I realize that going to seminars and, oh, we're having a meeting and we're having this, it's just not something that fits into a business owner schedule. Well, they're trying to make yeah, money. They're trying to keep and, it and, going. And, and mm -hmm. truthfully, mm -hmm. and I've been a business owner for 38 years now, and it's, I chose this way, mm -hmm. as you know. I mean, cho choose, your, choose your punishment. And I chose this way because I truly felt that... Uh, I wanted to do my own thing. I did not want to be up under the shadow of a corporation. But owning a business is probably the toughest thing most people will ever do. Yes. I even think mm -hmm. it's tougher in many cases than a marriage because at least with a marriage, there's a sense of compromise mm -hmm. and negotiation. Mm -hmm. With running a business, if you don't make any money, yes, and you're, you're, you're gone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you're looking at yourself, and you, you just got to keep it going. You know, you're struggling. I tell people, you got a nickel in your pocket, you're doing good. Keep it moving. I keep, keep it, it going. moving. Keep <laughs> it moving. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, you have your good and bad days, and as business owners, you're, you're a dreamer. Yes. So you yes. have to be able to look ahead. And, you know, it might be dreary now, but the future's coming. And if you keep pushing, keep plugging, keep working, it's going to be wonderful. Do you see an uptick in people going into business? I do, and especially our young people. Oh, it, I'm so excited about that. It is. That. It is so amazing. I love to see young people do stuff. When they come stuff. in, and, and, and the thing that amazes me most is when they listen. Yes. You know, I have a young guy that I'm very proud of. He has a flooring business. I'm not going to call him out or mm -hmm. anything, but when I first met him, he was paying all this money. Every time he got a job, he'd hire these guys. He'd go get them. And he had nothing to show for it because he wasn't doing 1099s. And uh, the first How time I he, saw oh, him, he I was looked, paying them under the table. Yeah, or, you know, mm -hmm. called himself doing the right thing, but mm -hmm. nobody had ever connected him to the fact that he needed to issue a 1099 right. in order for it to be a write off. Right. And so it took me a couple years of lecturing, beating, spanking, mm -hmm. look, don't make me hunt you down. And now, uh -huh. Uh -huh. 1st of January comes and he Bam. must have. 20, 30 contractors that he pays. Oh my God! Almost a hundred thousand dollars in wages. Almost a so, hundred thousand dollars in yes. wages. And now, guess what? What? He, he can write it all. Right. Because he issues ten nine nine. Finally. So you know. that, in fact, reduces his mm -hmm. taxable oh, my base. Oh goodness! By far. Oh my God! By far, it's a difference between day and night for him on his taxes. The difference between paying IRS 
and have a little money of his own. Yes, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. actually, if you're going to work like a dog, you should make lots of yes. money. Yes, yes, you should. I mean, it's important. Mm -hmm. I'm like, mm -hmm. if you're going to live this kind of mm -hmm. life mm -hmm. and have everybody throwing sticks and mud at you for working 24-7, yep. you should yeah. have something to yes. show for this. Yes, yes. You really should. Mm -hmm. Now, he's how old is this young man? I'd say he's probably in his late 30s. He's young. Yeah, he's young. And not but only he's going to be rich. Yes, because he started two other businesses since I He started I met him. two other businesses? <laughs> yes, yes. So he's unmarried. Mm -hmm. No, he's married. Okay. But he says, he, he does, I don't party. I don't go out. Okay, he just he does says, his business. And that's how I get these jobs, because they know if they call me on Sunday, Saturday night, Friday night, I'm available and I'll show up. But that's exactly mm -hmm. the way mm -hmm. it Oh my God! Yes, he doesn't let anything mm -hmm. sacrifice. He has an understanding wife. Good. Um, and therefore he. Because she's a benefactor. Right. That's right. Yeah. Yes. Children. Yes. Yes. Children. Good. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Then yes. then so that he's works. Doing well. That and works. So, yeah. So I see a lot of that now, and that oh, really. Oh, that is so encouraging, mm -hmm. Robin. Because mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. both of us love young people. Yes. Yes. I so, mean that's just that's just mm -hmm. what and what the young works. people are really eating this business thing up because there's really nowhere for them in the job market. There isn't anywhere. You know, what, ten dollars an hour. Yes, and they see that, and so they start thinking about what they like, what mm -hmm. they can do. And they actually take the steps. You know, sometimes they're the wrong steps, but okay, they take but the you, steps. Okay, but they can come around. Yes, and so it is uh, <coughs> really refreshing to see business is really growing. People are really getting into it. It's exciting. Well, it's I exciting. know with young people, uh, their their culture is different, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. they tend to work more in a tribe way where they work with one another mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. they network differently than our generation mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know because with us it was always look at me look at me mm -hmm. and they don't get into that no they don't they actually <laughs> work together they talk amongst each other yes now they may not necessarily be sharing the right information right but they do share information right. and they help each other in informal ways they don't go to meetings and seminars right but they may meet somewhere and oh my friend let me introduce you next right you know, three of them are talking, they're sharing things, and next thing you know, they're all doing the same thing, and it's like, oh, this is great. You guys got your own network. Right, yes. and I, I tell you, uh, looking at my daughter, my oldest daughter, who is truly stepping into this in entertainment piece powerfully with mm -hmm. her group she's developing and getting ready to sign contracts with some major players, but how they all just up and move here, and mm -hmm. up and move mm -hmm. there, and mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. I'm like, how many of you all are moving? Well, I don't know, 10, 12. Mm -hmm, I'm like, mm -hmm, oh, my mm -hmm. God. Yes, yes. That, that it's just such a symbiosis that I, mm -hmm. I actually like it. And I'll tell you, a ton of my Facebook friends are young people. Okay. They okay. are young people. And, and it wasn't by choice. It just evolved like mm -hmm, that. Mm -hmm. And I really have enjoyed uh, talking to them. Now, one of the things I am challenged about, Robin, is they still don't have the understanding that you cannot – pull on somebody's time and resources free. Right, right. And, and I know one young lady wanted me to mentor her, her which I can't mentor me. <laughs> I haven't figured this thing out. And to give her, review her business plan. Give her, and, and I told her I, I truthfully didn't have time. And secondly, the kind of work you need, you need to go to a person such as yourself and be prepared to pay. And she typed in pay with a question mark. Yes. And I'm yes. like, uh, yes, because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. this is business. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And there's nothing free right, in right. the world of mm -hmm, business. Mm -hmm. People do have to pay for mm -hmm. services. Yes, so yes. have you encountered that with your younger people? Do they understand that it's about capitalism? Bottom line, you have to make money and you have to pay for advice. You pay your doctor, you pay your attorney, and actually, you pay your banker. You don't know it, but it's a form of interest. Right. And actually, you pay. Yes. So, and yes. so you can't expect people to do something mm -hmm. that benefits you mm -hmm. and nothing. they get for nothing. Right. That right. That's not proper. Yeah, but I, I don't even see young people feel that way, but I see that in all generations. Really? Yes, everybody's trying to get something for free, and when you tell them there's a cost, they're in shock. What? i got to pay you? Uh, oh, you're getting a benefit out of this. Uh, yes. yes. I'm educating you in a way that you couldn't get unless you went to school um, and paid for it. So it, it's not just the young people. Um, well, I'm encouraged to hear that because mm -hmm. I really didn't mm -hmm. think a person could uh, be in their 40s, 50s, and 60s even 
in business and have an expectation that you were a church. Oh, you'd be surprised. <laughs> you'd like, be you're surprised. Not a church. You know, I don't live on tithes and offering. You must pay me. That's right. You That's know, right. That, and then yeah. the shock, which mm -hmm. is, oh, mm -hmm. You're not the pastor? Right, no. Right, right. No, I'm not. Mm -hmm. You have to pay because that's business. Yes. You know, I yeah. enable you to make more money, so you have to be willing to pay for mm -hmm. that. Yeah, we have to get it. out of this free mentality. If it's free, it's for me. Uh, it, who said that? Free. There is nothing, not, yeah, not in nothing a capitalist free. society. Yeah, yeah, we're in that, America. That, this is and, America. I'm yes. like, you know, you can't, I can't even tell you to go to China because they're a capitalist society. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, but, mm -hmm. so I don't know who's giving away free stuff. Yeah, I don't either. And I so, mean, tell me, I'll mm -hmm. go. Yes, no, I don't you know, know either. And so I mean, even at the thrift store, you're going to pay. That's right, that's right. That's I mean, right. they say, well, they donated it to them. I say, yeah, they donated it to them, and you're going to pay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you go mm -hmm. in there, you're going to pay. That's just the major. So you do, you do business business owners mm -hmm. and what are some of the things you and you also do personal taxes mm -hmm. yes so yes. let's talk about what it's because tax season is getting ready to start and I appreciate you giving me your time because I know you are booked and busy every time I stick my little head in to say hi mm -hmm. she says she's got a client <laughs> I'm like well dang Robin I, you know okay good that's all good so what are some of the things that people need to prepare for as they go into the filing season, which is getting ready to commence. Okay, well, tax <clears throat> season does officially start today. Oh my gosh! Uh, today is okay. the start of e-file, and uh, people have to be prepared with their documents and documentation. Um, one of the biggest changes this year is this new Affordable Care Act. Please talk to me and about that. And how it has come to affect the taxes. I tell my clients that I've seen already this year. I am now the health care police. Oh, no! <laughs> because actually people have to prove to their tax person or on their tax return that they are covered mm -hmm. or not covered. Mm -hmm. And if you are not covered, you will be receiving your first penalty. Whoa, uh, Robin! Yes, on They your tax are doing return. this. Yes, this is in effect right now. Oh, ouch, 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 and no! Yes, and the penalty this year is not bad compared to what's coming, but it is bad. It's either 1% of your income or $95. So help me to understand, what is the income threshold for this? Uh, the income threshold, uh, it kind of depends on your household level, but somewhere around 20000 There are exemptions and mm -hmm, so forth. Mm -hmm. But if you're making decent money, um, your employer is not doing health care, and you've chosen not to take a look at the, uh, the health care marketplace, right. Uh, you definitely will have a penalty, and not only you, everyone you have chosen to claim on your tax return also has to be accounted for. Oh, my gosh. So what we're seeing this year so far is that you know how people try to claim other people. And now, like I had a client last week who wanted to claim her brother, grown. She said she takes care of him. And I said, well, well, your penalty for him will be $155 because he doesn't have health insurance. And she was like, take him take, off. Take him <laughs> off. <laughs> <laughs> so that was kind of... That was interesting. That was interesting. It's going to make for an interesting tax season because also the children have to be accounted for. The children. The children have to be covered. Everyone has to be covered, unless you have an exemption. Okay. Now, what I'm finding so far is that um, a lot of children are covered, have been covered under different programs that are out here already. Okay. And so a lot of times it's just the parent that has an issue. Mm -hmm. Um Employers, if you're employed, you're generally okay because employers kind of understand this and so they give them the benefit. But a lot of people who are coming to me now complaining about my employer was so high and I can't afford it, I say, well, then get on the marketplace. Right. You know, get on the marketplace. They've got things there. The marketplace mm -hmm. is kind of a really wonderful way that it turned out. Um, all the talk about it, but for all the people who got covered who had never been covered, Self-employed people have an opportunity That's to have affordable, That's what I was so excited. Affordable yes, health care for mm -hmm. self-employed people. Yes, yes. That's kind of one of the persons that this was designed for. Okay. Not just the low income and poor people who can't mm -hmm. afford it, but self-employed people who really could not afford to get into the regular marketplace of health care. Right. Because it's expensive, It's Robin. super expensive. And part of the health care uh, law is that they have these premium tax credits. Okay. So the credits are designed to do two things. You can either wait and get your credit and claim it on your tax return mm -hmm. and get it as a refund, or you can use the credits to pay for your 
uh, premiums. And so really? a lot of my self-employed people are so happy and smiling now because I've got insurance, I've got the premium credits, and so it's really great. Now, from a tax perspective, for us, those people are going to be the most difficult because we actually have to do a calculation to determine whether the credit was too much or not enough. And the credits mm -hmm. could end up making them owe a little bit if they got too much credits in the beginning because they were going on their 2013 income. Okay. And so it could shake out. So those people are going to be a little tougher for us. They have to come in with uh, statements from the marketplace. Okay. Um, whereas if you have it on your employer, your W-2 now, they use a code DD in Box 12 mm -hmm. to indicate um, health insurance. And they've actually been doing this for a couple of years just so also really? employees could see the cost of their health care. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's amazing some of the money that some of these employers pay for a person's health care. Well, see, this is, a, this is the issue that has challenged me. And I'm so glad that we're talking about the Affordable Care Act <clears throat> and its impact because a lot of people, I am telling you, the American people don't get it. Right. And when I say don't get it, they're still going to try to file their own little taxes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, they're going to mm -hmm. still try to deal with the IRS. And I'm like, whooping coming. Yep, yep, because there whooping is. Whooping coming because it's coming mm -hmm. out of your, ch your, your refund, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Zippo. Right. Th right. They're going to get their money. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that is one of the things that even uh, people who do their own, they're going to have to figure this out. And Ooh, if you, I would not want to do that. If you weren't covered for the whole year, you have to account for every month. And so there can be a calculation wow. where you missed four months. Um, I think they give you a little write-off if you were three and under. There's a mm -hmm. little gap. But once you get to not being covered, say like you weren't covered for five months, then you have to monthly calculate your penalty. My gosh. Yes. yes. Now, if a person is already under health care, like for last year, does it automatically renew with the same carrier, or do they have to go into the marketplace every year? They suggest that they do because what, what happened between the first year and the second mm -hmm. year is that more people bought in. You know, we were all anti, oh, uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Affordable Care, I don't yeah, want Obama mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah, I don't want but Obama stuff. as it but got going and worked, <clears> and millions <throat> right. of people signed up, insurance carriers came on board. More policies became available. Mm -hmm. And most people were encouraged to get back on this year, basically simply just to get a lower policy, since mm -hmm. there's so many there now. So it's kind of recommended that you shop around, because each year more and more people are coming in, insurers. And so that makes this the is a prices real going positive. Down. The mm -hmm. fact that uh, the traditional carriers are now mm -hmm. in the marketplace, yes, 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 because they were so much like, ah, I don't yeah, think so, yeah, I yeah, don't think yeah. so. But this has I become don't. a hit. I don't mm. care what they so say. So is it better, perhaps? Can a person get better pricing individually rather than through employers, which would be using a group type of pricing? Okay, do you know anything about whether that works better? It doesn't. I, I'm not sure they have that total option. If your mm -hmm. employer offers it, you first have to take it. Take it. Okay. Take it from the employer in mm -hmm. order to. It's one of the first questions they ask you on the marketplace is, are you covered by your employer? Mm -hmm. And if you say, yes, I've chosen not to take it, then you really have to go through some changes in order to qualify for the marketplace. So oh. I almost have to prove that it's unaffordable for you. Okay. But I think that um, one of the things that the, um, the Affordable Care Act did was kind of clean up the policies of employers, which really honestly weren't up to par, and that's why you mm -hmm. heard all that noise, oh, my policy was canceled. Your policy was crap. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and so uh, now you have another standard. So employers have had to regroup, mm -hmm. and so they have to uh, apply that, and what they're doing is they're making their employees the uh, difference is, is coming out of the employee's pocket. And, okay. And employees are very unhappy now. Um, I just heard a story about, I'll just say Federated or Macy's or whoever they are, mm -hmm. Federated, that they, they have really had to make a major change um, in their policies, whereas they had to put more costs on their employees. And employees mm -hmm. are upset. And then if by chance you have an employer policy, you didn't take advantage of it, and you didn't get in during open enrollment, you're kind of stuck. Oh, wow. So now you're stuck paying a penalty. Because wow, you weren't covered. because you weren't covered. Yes, and the, the marketplace is not really there for people who have an option to have employer mm -hmm. health care. It's really there for people self-employed or people who have no option or their employer doesn't do it. Um, the, I do know the insurance has to be less than 8% of your 
income. And okay. so that's, that's one way that you can get out of it. But it's really an interesting factor this year. So far, I haven't liked it, I mm -hmm. must say, because, I, you know, we do enough policing in the tax industry, and now we're the health now insurance you're the police. Health, yes. This is what I'm saying, Robin. <laughs> and then to throw the bill, the penalties on people, it's really the hard part of, oh, you weren't covered? Okay, well, it's going to be then. A lot of times they don't see it, but I want them to be aware because um, I say, you know, you can get on the marketplace. I even have a computer here in the office. Just sign up, get on there, get and on sign it, in, get and on. get to yeah, looking, you yeah, know. Yeah. Otherwise, next year your penalty started like $364. Well, that is that and, is and within so within three years, hard. you're going to be paying the cost of a the, premium. Right. So why not get in? So is the premium what I'm not clear about, and I don't want to digress because we've got a lot to talk about, and time is clicking right on. <clears throat> Does a person pay monthly premiums, or do they pay their premium out of their tax check, or how do premiums get paid? Oh, they're paid uh, monthly through, okay. through the, I guess, the... Um, so you send a check? The marketplace will okay. we'll build them. I'm okay. sure a lot of people who can afford it could probably get it signed up with their um, bank account where it's okay, an got automatic it. thing. Got it. Got but it. then also the credits are applied because generally okay. if you're paying a premium, you're going to qualify for some of the premium tax credits. And so a lot of times people are telling me that by the time they get their credits, their payment is very low. That is so good. Yeah, that is very low, very affordable, And actually, very low. you know what, on a, just on a, uh, uh, from a federal perspective, just like seniors have Medicare, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is the government's paying for it, mm -hmm. I absolutely believe that it is a sin to be a country this rich and to not have health care. Right. Particularly right. since the number one reason for bankruptcy Mm -hmm. in America mm -hmm. is hospital mm -hmm. and health care charge. People yes. are yes. sick mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. getting sicker mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and nothing, no coverage, no anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and I found it to be amazing, and I shouldn't say that because I am a Kentuckian by birth and home rights, and Kentuckians were carrying on so badly about this Obamacare. Mm -hmm. yes, yes. And I'm like, but my state is broke. Right, right. And I mean, you know, mm -hmm. we running around in trucks and mm -hmm. carrying on. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. everybody there, teeth gone, everybody should be getting health care. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. they got these babies and they got poor money. They're mm -hmm. not making any money. And I'm like, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The one place that mm -hmm. I thought would be so excited about being able to have the government pay your bill. Mm -hmm. uh, oh no, I want to pay it myself. Yeah, new. I'm like, really yes, now? Yes, yes. But believe you me, Kentuckians have taken full advantage. I of know it. they have, because it was like mm -hmm. the light bulb mm -hmm. went off. Yes, click. I don't like the Obama, but I like this affordable. I like care this act. affordable. <laughs> care act. Man, yeah. I'm, thinking, I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, we we mm -hmm. we got that, Dumbo. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We got we got that, but. Um, that that is very very interesting so the burden the plus of it is that you should be getting a whole lot more business mm -hmm. yes. nobody mm -hmm. nobody is going to be doing their own taxes why would you yeah it makes it very complicated and hard especially if they're getting those premiums right they actually have to make calculations and things and so it, it, it's complicated and they give the forms on paper like oh yeah just do this and I said now, people have a hard enough time doing their return. Oh, you want like them to, you calculate would, to calculate, to calculate this? Are you penalty? like, do math? Yes, yes. Are you kidding? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that is so be. funny. But it is really, it is really a burden, and um, it was a bad time for Congress to cut IRS's budget by three hundred and forty-five million dollars. That's what I. That's what I just read. Million dollars. Three hundred and forty-five million no. dollars. Billion. 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 They cut from IRS. Cut from IRS. So, so who's going to process this stuff? Well, you may be the police, yeah, but who's the, the judge? Yeah, who's the judge? Well, one thing about the, like I tell people, everybody's worried all this talk. Oh, my refund's going to be late. Well, it could be if you don't get caught up, but the e-file system itself is automated. Oh, and wow. And every year IRS works a little harder to get it running more efficiently. So as long as you don't kick out of that, mm -hmm. as long as You're you can okay. stay in it and your return can roll but those who bop out for this problem or that problem whoo it's going to be a rough year i just it's bet be a rough it is year, you i know. read i think i read something in the washington post or new york times i'm not sure talking about <clears throat> the severity of the cut mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the inability to handle 
the volume of business that would be coming in from this affordable care, because people want to know how to do calculations, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and the fact that 50% of the calls weren't even going to be answered. Right, right. Because they don't have mm -hmm, the personnel mm -hmm. they don't have it, to do it. Mm -hmm. on, the way, uh, on the way here, I heard on NPR that uh, they're even proposing that they're going to have to take a couple of days furloughs. Uh, and actually Whoa. have their people off without pay just to kind of keep within their budget constraints. So the people that are going to be hurt by that are, are the taxpayer. I would have to believe that. Uh, the taxpayer, you know, they think they're hurting IRS, but they're actually hurting the taxpayer. And this is, really was a bad year to do that. Uh-huh, particularly uh, with the enforcement mm -hmm. yeah, criteria. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out who enforces this thing if you don't do what you're supposed to do? I, it, it's supposed to be IRS. I um, can't believe that. It's supposed to be. I mean, even though they've taken all the... But they do have some grip. benefits. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm just thinking the IRS can go into your bank account. Oh, yes. <clears throat> without notice or consent, the IRS can take your stuff without mm -hmm. notice. Mm -hmm. So they do have the ability to get stuff. Yes, but I heard, and I don't know how true this is, we'll have to see how time works out, that they're not going to be as hardcore with the health care penalties. In okay. other words, they're not going to pursue I bet. that. Now, if Initial. you owe them taxes, mm -hmm. and it's their money, they're going to pursue that, but initially they're going to give you an opportunity. They're not going to go straight to your bank account. Mm -hmm. They'll probably send you a few love letters and things I, like that. I love that. Prior send to you a few <laughs> love letters. Uh, but I hear that they're not going to be aggressive right now. Mm -hmm. Now, Yet. if the money starts piling, and as the penalties increase, like I said, it's going to be about $1,500 penalty in three years. I'm like, my God, yes. $1,500. And that's if you're a low earner. Uh -huh. Now, if you're a high earner, it's going to be a big chunk of uh, percentage of your income, mm -hmm. and you're really going to hurt. Mm -hmm. um, that you're going to say, well, let me just go get a policy right now. Right, you know, so which I, is probably what they want you to do anyway. It is, and that's the whole point of the penalties mm -hmm. is that there are a certain number of people who just don't want it, don't feel like they need it, and a lot of people don't want to get caught up in the health care system. They're halfway healthy. Um, they don't really need health insurance, but then there's that thing where you just never know. One well, emergency Robin, can change I mean, your whole life. The, that's the whole basis of insurance. <laughs> that's right. I mean, unless you're a god, mm -hmm. you yes. don't know. Yeah, you just don't know. And, I mean, I'm, I, I deal with, with issues affecting people every single day on insurability mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. of health, mm -hmm. diabetes, mm -hmm. and, and heart conditions, and strokes, and everything. And we all think that we're immortal. Right. Right. But 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 we're not. But we're not, and, that and one I mean, thing, yes. One thing, and mm -hmm. boom, you're yes. done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it can be, particularly mm -hmm. as you get older. Yes, yes, and it gotta, becomes more progressive. Mm -hmm. And there's so much wellness now, preventative, that's mm -hmm. free in the healthcare law that doesn't even make <clears throat> sense not to go for it these days. You I know, agree. Go ahead and get yourself fixed up, straightened up. Half of it's going to be free, and. You know, it's, and it's, live yes, yes, while you yes, can. Yes, yes, yes. So while you can, yes, that's so wonderful. Mm -hmm. So we were talking about preparing for filing coming up. Some of the things that you want to have in place before they come to see an individual such as yourself. Well, all of your documentation. Everybody seems to be in so much of a hurry. Um, you need your if you if you're a homeowner. Okay. You got to get your mortgage interest statement. That's a deduction you don't want to pass up because you certainly paid enough and your taxes are, are available online so you can look those up. Um, a lot of people forget that they've done investments. They have investments. They're mm -hmm. going to have dividend income. They're going to have capital gains. They want to hurry up and do their taxes, but those statements don't come out till later. Um, there's a lot of different uh, things that people are not prepared for. People now want to come in, oh, can I use my check stuff? No. No. That's illegal. IRS doesn't like that. Um, and I don't like it either because your check stub could or could be right depending on what your payroll company or your payroll person, mm -hmm. how good they were. So um, people need to prepare for that. They need to get their charitable contributions together. Uh, churches don't get those statements out early. Now, they get them out, but they're not really early. And so a lot of times we want to rush and go in, and then all the deductions and benefits that you get, you're, you're not prepared for. So here we are, you come in, you bring your stuff, and then you have to go chase around town and find your, oh, let me call this person, let me call that person, and why don't we just relax and wait till everything comes in the mail. Right, because it know, will. Especially with the charitable contributions, and you know, you can get a rough draft of what you're doing. A lot of people are still making this decision 
even this time of year, whether they want to put money into a traditional IRA, they can do it up to April the 15th and then declare whether it's for the past year or the current year. So what can, what about business owners? They have their, their uh, kind of IRA plan to their little pension plan. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they, how much is that this year? Um, the pension, I'm not sure. For the SEP, a, a self-employed? SEP, yeah. <coughs> Say, I don't want to say it's the same as the IRA. I want to say it's like 17.5. Mm -hmm. It's more. It, it may have gone up mm -hmm. a little it's bit. More. Yeah, is it like 18 something mm -hmm. now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's yeah. more. Yeah. And, and so that goes against, I think, their gross. Yes, it does. It does. Yeah. It's a write off of what we call above the line. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's prior so to that. So all business owners have until April the 15th mm -hmm. to declare which particular year they want to do, do their that deduction. On. Mm -hmm. and, and, and business owners, do that one. Mm -hmm. Okay, do that mm -hmm. because it's, a, it's, it's right off the top. Yes, it is. It is just like the health insurance. Uh, a lot of business owners are a little shaky about this health care law. Mm -hmm. They've gotten a year's reprieve. Well, small business owners, if you have less than 50 employees, you don't really have to worry anyway. The only way you can get the credit that's given to business owners from the marketplace is you have to buy your insurance. But business owners have always had a health care deduction. That's not going to change, so it doesn't matter. If you, so if you're doing it out of your pocket and you're not going through the marketplace, it's still a write-off. It's still a write-off. And? This tax system is so well designed mm -hmm. for businesses. For business. It's for wonderful business. It's a for wonderful business. yes. for businesses. Yes. Everybody yes. else take mm -hmm. a number. Yes, yes. But for business yes. owners, for it just seems to be the place mm -hmm. to be. And for a business owner who pays for his family, their write-off is above the, above the bottom line also. Are you kidding it reduces me? reduces the income, yes, for the family, the personal right. side of it. Yes, right, so yes. it takes care of the business owner mm -hmm. and the family. Mm -hmm. And the family, and so that can reduce income And then he can bit. do his pension, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. can fund yes. his pension. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If yes. his wife is at home or working, her wife is at home, they can write off. That's right. Any health I tell you, costs. this is sweet. Mm -hmm. It is if sweet. If you're working mm -hmm. on your own, mm -hmm. your own company. Yes, yes. It yes. doesn't work for people that are working. No, not, some, not in that way. Not in that, that way. way. You can that write is, it off, but not right. in that way. You no. know, that is why, and I didn't want to get off on this, but this is why, and you taught me this. I saw it myself. And, and for you viewers, I actually went through her tax class. I, did, I know how to do taxes. <laughs> I, I do. And, and I went crazy. So, and she's very good, too. And, and no, don't call me. <laughs> don't call me because I will send you to her. I'm not doing that. But I did it because uh, in my private practice, I ran across consistently so many people whose taxes were done incorrectly or improperly. Yes. And by CPAs, tax mm -hmm. preparers, mm -hmm. tax accountants, mm -hmm. it was a mess. Yes, yes. And when I went through your class, number one was, I'm not doing this to myself again <laughs> in life. <laughs> and the second thing was, wow, there is a lot to know. Mm -hmm. There is a lot to know, and then you have to decide. But, you know, understanding that tax laws were really written for people in business. Mm, really that's work. amazing. There, there, there are so many benefits, and also for the wealthy. We might as well just put that out there. Well, they're um, in business. Yes, right. They they're own in corporations yes, they and do. everything mm -hmm, else. Mm -hmm. And there's mm -hmm. so many write-offs mm -hmm. uh, that people don't know about, um, and also don't know how to take them. You know, it's understanding you just can't write it off because it feels good that day and you do it. Mm -hmm. And have documentation. So right. That, that's part right. of the education process is teaching people how to uh, get the write-off. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. That is mm -hmm. absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. So make sure, number one, I would say call you. And I'm not saying that to, to, to pet you. I'm saying because <clears throat> you're such a professional. And I have learned so much uh, from the relationship. And, and I'm so proud that you're now truly in your own practice so you can keep Thank all you. your money. Yes, yes. You know, yes. no more fees and everything. You can keep all your dollars to yourself and have benefit. What are some of the things, quickly, because we've only got five minutes left. Okay. What should retirees and people getting ready to retire? Because there's a whole surge of baby boomers, uh, 10,000 a day. Yes, yes. That are coming out the marketplace. What should they be gathering together to file for this 2014 tax year? Well, they've got to wait on all their documents in terms of the money that they've received. Mm -hmm. Some people take a lump sum buyout when they retire. Mm -hmm. they Isn't that this. taxable? Yes, it is. Uh, um, all of it? 
Ugh. Yes, most of it. And and so they've kind of got a plan. Now, I've got some really great clients that I have, i got to say, that my clientele. And so when they get ready to retire, they actually come see me first. That is so excellent. <coughs> Excuse me. What I tell people is um, when you retire, it is a change of life. And a lot of people have this mentality that they're done with taxes when they retire. But quiet as it's kept, it's the worst time of life. Oh, and especially if you don't, say like you've worked, you decide to retire in September. Uh -huh. You've earned nine months worth of salary. Then you decide to take this big lump, which it takes you to a whole nother tax, tax bracket. bracket. Then you start getting your uh, retirement benefits and you forgot to take the tax out. You forgot to tell them that I need to have my taxes taken out of my retirement because in my mind, I really believe that I no longer have to pay taxes. And so it comes <laughs> as a shock. So I talk to them and I talk people up to, before they get there, I scare them so badly that they're, okay, they bring me actually their retirement paperwork. Good. And I try to tell people, if you're gonna retire, don't do it after you've earned a whole year's salary. Make your retirement date the end of the year and then make that lump sum check come in January when you're starting a whole new a phase. A new of, year. Yes, a new year. And so it's, it's all about planning when you retire, uh, just so you're not hit. The first year is the hardest. Oh, wait. The first year is the hardest. And so I tell people a lot of times you got to just put some money aside. But once you see how the first year goes, how your income's going to settle mm -hmm. out, then. Um, then, then I can help people with the withholding. This is okay. how much you want to take. This is how much you want to pay. But this whole fantasy of being retired and out of the tax game is, is a fantasy. Not unless you've had a Roth IRA that you've put lots of money in and that's where you're going to mm -hmm. draw back because mm -hmm. that's a non-taxable income. But most of the time when you're getting retirement benefits from a job, from the government or somebody that you retired from, mm -hmm. that is taxable income to the day you die. That is so powerful. <laughs> yes. That is, give us your phone number, please. Uh, my phone number is area code 513-948-1829. 513-948-1829. Mm -hmm. And believe it or not, we, we're out of time. And I'm just getting ready to talk to this woman. Now we're getting ready to get deep but <clears throat> time is over. I would encourage you to make tax planning an agenda item. You may hate it, but it is a part of the American way you are going to pay your taxes. Now, if you choose to pay them all of the money because you weren't willing to go to a seasoned tax professional, then that's fine. The government's not going to turn away any money. They'll take all they can get and more if you let them. But I do encourage you because I believe that you're people that respect knowledge and information, or else why would you be listening to my show? I would encourage you to call Robin and people that you know who are in her field, who you are, have confidence in and who are proven, and uh, save yourself a little bit of money. Uh, also, if you are not um, in business and want to go into business, 2015 is a great year to do it. I'm telling you, if gas prices still keep staying low, people's confidence is going to build up. Internet has leveled the playing field. And it's a great time to be in America. That's what I would say today. Thank you for being a part of today's session with Robin Lewis. Thank you for having me. a tax accountant and knows her stuff. I'm Michelle Graves, wishing you an awesome day. And as always, God bless you.